Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you missed my big grocery haul from a few days ago, I am going to link that in the description. I kept the camera rolling that day and decided to bring you along as I meal prep and just prep a bunch of the food and different single ingredients before I put it away in the fridge and freezer. This makes meal time so much simpler. As you see here, I'm opening up these ribeyes. I have six total and I am going to go ahead and season them and individually wrap them in plastic before I stick them in a gallon bag to put in the freezer. Now, steak, particularly ribeye, is not something you serve a family of eight to 10 on a regular basis, but I did figure out several months ago when I purchased some steak for my husband's birthday and realized if I slice it, um, not too thin, but maybe like half an inch, if I do half inch slices, of course my husband got his own steak, but um, I cut the rest of them into half inch slices and every one of us, the rest of us, got three or four or even five slices of steak along with like a potato or sweet potato and some veggies or a salad. And it was so good and so satisfying without spending the money on a single steak for each person, which would be insane. My very favorite way to cook a steak these days is to season it with Montreal steak seasoning, which I just purchased in bulk at Sam's or Costco, and then um, individually wrap them. And I place them in a gallon freezer bag and I put them in the sous vide and I cook them all day at about 134. So 135 is medium rare, but you're also going to sear it on the skillet or the grill before you serve it. So I try to give a little bit of wiggle room I would hate for these amazing steaks to accidentally make it to like medium. That would just be incredibly sad. So I put it at about 133 or 134 all day long and then quickly sear them on a hot skillet or grill right before serving. And of course, let them rest for a few minutes. I don't have a plan to serve these anytime soon, so I am gonna go ahead and put these in the freezer, and that's why I am individually wrapping them in addition to sticking them in a gallon freezer bag, just so they are extra protected. I'm sure we'll have them sometime over the next couple of weeks, but definitely not this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick them in the freezer. When I am ready to cook these, I will pull them out the day before and stick the bag in the fridge. And then when I'm ready to put it in the sous vide, I will divide it among two different gallon bags. So they aren't all on top of each other and they all have plenty of room to be heated evenly and thoroughly. If you are unfamiliar with a sous vide, it is just like, <laughs> It's like a magic wand that you put in a large pot of water. This is not on the stove top. I just put it at the end of my island so I can plug the sous vide into the outlet at the end of the island. What makes the sous vide so unique and amazing compared to any other cooking method is that your food is in a bag in the water. So the food itself is not actually wet. And then you are able to hold that meat at the exact temperature you want it at for as long as you need until you are ready to sear it off and serve it. So there's no way possible to overdo or overcook uh, your meat and it just comes out perfect every time you get to set the temperature. It's absolutely amazing. It's my very favorite way of cooking meat. And you can find them on Amazon for under $100. I'll link the one that I have in the description below. In my April grocery haul, I also purchased celery and bell peppers. The bell peppers are a good price right now because we're coming into spring and I feel like celery is always pretty cheap. I don't have either of these on the menu this week but I am prepping these by slicing the peppers and dicing the celery and putting them in these silicone freezer bags so that when I do need to use them, it'll be super easy to just break off a chunk or grab some peppers out of these bags and use them for things like stir fry, fajitas, or the celery can go in soups or casseroles. And it's just one more step that I am saving myself later. Everything that you are seeing me do in this video was done in under an hour after I had gotten the rest of my groceries put away. It really is absolutely worth every minute. Some of my girls even helped me by taking the meat off the bones of these two rotisserie chickens. And because I didn't have time to put the carcasses in the instant pot on that particular day, I stuck them both in a gallon freezer bag, stuck them in the freezer, and I will take them out and make chicken stock with them probably next week. But the actual meat went into two separate gallon bags and into the freezer. And those will be great on nights that we are in a hurry and need something fast like chicken spaghetti or quesadillas. 
If you've been around here for a while, you know that I am a numbers nerd. I love to keep track of things and in inventory. And this, for example, I am restocking my three two gallon buckets of sugar. So this holds, it actually only ended up holding 50 pounds. I have one more 10 pound bag of sugar in the pantry that we will start to use first before we break into these buckets. But I bought 60 pounds total. I get the organic cane sugar from Costco. It's a little over $8 a bag. So I think that's a pretty good price. It actually beats the price from Azure Standard. And I am filling these two gallon buckets that have gamma seal lids and we just refill the jar that is in my baking cabinet in the kitchen as it becomes empty. This has been a really convenient way to store sugar. Even if you are storing bulk sugar for long term, like if you wanted to buy, honestly, I think this is going to last us six to eight months at least, maybe even close to a year. But you don't have to use things like Mylar bags to safely store sugar. You just want to make sure it is in a container that keeps moisture, rodents, and insects out. And these buckets with gamma seal lids definitely do that job. I would say I do the majority of our cooking from scratch, but I do still purchase a lot of single ingredients from the grocery store. And I am hoping 2024 proves to be a year of increasing how much we are cooking from scratch at home, even making more of our things like tortillas and pasta. In previous years, I will make pasta or tortillas more because it's delicious homemade versus store-bought and less about the quality of ingredients and the cost effectiveness. So I'm really looking forward to tracking how much sugar and flour and just all the basic baking necessities that we go through in a year if I am doing the majority of our cooking from scratch. I have mentioned in one previous video, I believe, that I have finally, finally, for the first time in my life, made successful sourdough using Kate from Venison for Dinner. Her soft sourdough sandwich bread, which does not involve any stretch and folds or 24 hours worth of work. It is amazing. The flavor is fantastic. It's nice and simple. I don't feel like a slave to my dough. I will be sharing that in a separate video, but I will include the link to that recipe on her website in the description below. Having that recipe mastered at this point eliminates my need for quite as much store-bought yeast, which is fantastic. So we will see how the summer goes and the rest of this year as far as making more of our items from scratch using our simple ingredients that we store in bulk and how that affects my grocery budget. Something I've been thinking about for quite a while, having four daughters and eventually, Lord willing, four daughters-in-law, I would love to write a cookbook that contains all of our simplest, most beloved recipes that I have made my children's entire childhood growing up, things that they like to request when they're coming home from college. And I think I am going to have my husband, who is a web developer, um, polish up my website so I can start adding recipes in one single place that will be printable and more easily accessible. I don't know about you, but when I have done a huge grocery trip or grocery shopping day, multiple stops takes really hours, it feels like, to completely unload. Of course, I film a, haul, a grocery haul video and then to put everything away. By the end of that day, I am like, I don't want to cook. What am I going to make for supper? So one of my twins suggested salsa chicken, which is super easy. It's probably my favorite Instant Pot recipe. You just add chicken breasts, corn, any sort of beans, about half of a jar of salsa, and then when it's finished in the Instant Pot, I do 20 minutes at high pressure. You shred the chicken, you add homemade taco seasoning, and a block of cream cheese, you mix it all up, and you can serve it in tortillas, you can serve it over rice or a bed of lettuce. It is a family favorite that we have at least a few times a month. I hope this video has inspired you to take a look at your groceries when you get home from the store and think about how you can prep to save yourself time in the future before you put those groceries away. Thanks for watching.